for Galvanize, the Who Not Do series. I'm Lisa Roman. We're talking with influential media personnel, not about their jobs and what they do, but rather about who they are. I'm joined by NFL media columnist and reporter Judy Batista. Judy, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Great to be here. You have been covering the NFL for over 20 years. You've been in locker rooms, talking to players, interviewing them, getting to know them, and building trust. If I asked those players to describe you, what would you hope they'd say? Well, I I would hope they would say that I was serious and like, you know, I was a serious journalist. Um, And also I would hope they would say that I gave them a chance to... um, to express themselves and to get their side of the story in. I think that's like one of the most important things that reporters can do. And it's why being around teams that you cover um, is so important. But I've always thought that like the sort of face-to-face interaction is important because first of all, it it gives people a chance to get to know you a little bit. And and it also gives them a chance to sound off. You know, I think it's important if if you have a job that requires you to be critical, you know, it's important to put yourself out there so that if they want to give you a piece of their mind, they have the opportunity to do it. At the start of your career, you worked for the Miami Herald as a news journalist. Quickly, you switched to sports, but looking back at that, how did covering news help you to be a better sports storyteller? Oh, well, I mean, look, it because it teaches you like the fundamentals of reporting, right? I mean, be, you're essentially a news reporter as a sports reporter anyway. It's just a different kind of information. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it was incredible training, um, especially in Miami. There, I covered the Miami Hurricanes, which was a really high profile team. They were one of the best teams in the country at the time. So you really got used to um, reporting on people who were scrutinized a lot and who other people were reporting on. So um, it forced you, it forced me at least to look for different angles on stories and to develop relationships with them so that I would get information. It forced you to be competitive. Um, covering covering news is, is the same as covering sports. I mean, it's just all about um, knowing how to get information, knowing how to talk to people, interview people, to get them to give you information, building sources, building trust with sources. It's all the same thing. As a young journalist, so many people give me advice about being myself and and just talking in an interview as you would have a normal conversation. How have you developed your personality so when you step into an interview, it really is a seamless transition from conversation to interview? Um, I, because I think, of, I think I've always thought of it more just as a conversation. Like, I don't think of it as an interview. I think of it as like, I'm talking to this person and there's stuff I want to know. When I was very young in the business, starting out, there was another writer at the Miami Herald. He was a news writer, a very good writer. And he told me, at that time, he told me, write the way you talk, because that is, you know, it's more conversational. It's, it's more familiar. It's easier for people to relate. And I think that goes for interviewing too, whether you're doing it for a written product or a broadcast. You know, the other thing I would say about interviewing is like, listen. I mean, it, it's like a conversation. It's like maybe talking to a colleague at work um, where you're trying to get information, but you're also trying to hear what they're saying and follow up on what they're saying. So uh, that's, I think, uh, that's my style at least. In terms of listening and staying on track with the conversation, young reporters are very scared of making mistakes, maybe listening too closely or not listening at all. In your career, what's a mistake you made that you're so grateful for now? Wow, let me think about that one for a second. Um, I, I've made a lot of mistakes. Everybody has made a lot of mistakes. I, I'm sure I can't even think of one specific, but like. A, I have, I can generally remember walking out of interviews and thinking like, why didn't I ask that question? I should have followed up on that part of it. Like that would have been an interesting thing. That happens all the time. It still happens today where you're done with an interview with, you know, you'll have somebody on the phone or, or somebody in person and you think like, oh, (laughs) why didn't I, you know, I should have followed up on that. That would have been really interesting. Um, I, I think that's normal. Like, you know, especially because most interviews, you know, you have some sort of time limit on it, like you're not getting unlimited time with, you know, Tom Brady every day. So, you know, inevitably, I walk away from interviews thinking I wish I'd had a chance to ask this or 
I blew it. I should have followed that thread of the conversation. All those what ifs certainly haven't stopped you from a very, very long list of successful accolades in your professional career. You were at the New York Times. Now you're at NFL Media. You've won an Emmy. You've established yourself as a killer question asker. But <laughs> I've learned all of that online just from research. What's something you're really proud of that I can't Google? Well, I mean, this is more personal, but I'm really proud that I've managed to, um, I think, be a good mom at the same time as I've had this career. Like these jobs are not always conducive um, to having great family relationships because you travel a lot and the hours are weird and it's hard. Um, but I think I've managed to juggle it pretty well. Um, my daughter's 15 years old right now. And I think, um, I mean, she's certainly by far the thing I'm most proud of in my life. But um, I think it, you know, that would be something you, you can't Google, but that's, that's the thing I'm most proud of that I think I've managed to juggle that. Well, the past couple of months, you told me you had some more time at home. Have you been able to <laughs> spend more time with her? What have you guys been yeah. doing? Well, yeah, like you, you do nothing but spend time together now, right? It's like, ah! Um, yeah, we've been, I mean, it's sort of hilarious, you know, she, to school. My husband works from home too, and I work from home. So we've all sort of got our spaces in our apartment in New York um, that we work from. And um, we've spent a lot of time together and it's actually been pretty great. You know, it's pretty great to not have obligations. Um, you know, you don't have to get to tennis lessons and you don't have to get to the PTA meetings. You're just home, you know, and it's pretty cool. Being home, especially with your daughter, what's something you found that you and her maybe are doing more now than you ever have before? Uh, well, we've always done it, but we're doing more. I mean, we watch a lot of sports together. She's a sports fan too. Um, we, so now that sports are coming back, we're, we're watching a lot of it. We watch a lot of baseball um, and she loves football during football season. She watches football, but you know, we, um, I think the, the thing that stands out and I think probably a lot of other people would say is like, you know, we're eating dinner together as a family a lot, which you know, in, in, in normal times, you know, you're sort of all running in different directions and, um, and that's pretty great, you know. That is great. Just family time around the table. There's nothing better than that. Um, it, it hasn't always been smooth sailing during this quarantine. I mean, I know I've been emotionally, physically, mentally drained, just trying to stay on top of work and, and being inside. What is one thing you found yourself leaning on during quarantine to get you through those tough days? Um, I think I've leaned on um, routine a lot. That has kept me going. Like I've sort of been in a routine of like, you know, I, I've i always, I wake up early in the morning and I exercise early. And so that has sort of, I kept that in the routine and then I've started work. I've Again, you know, I'm lucky because I can work from home. So that part, as much as it's different, where we're literally doing TV from our bedrooms, like it's different, but it, but you're still doing work. You know, on the days when, especially in the beginning, um, in March, when things really shut down, like that's when you sort of get into your head too much and you're thinking too much and maybe you're watching too much CNN and, you know, you're obsessing over the, you know, the coronavirus updates and that's not good for you at all. So um, I, I think routine has just helped me you know, keep going. Last question before I let you go. If you gave me and all of the galvanized women watching this who are just starting out their journalistic careers, as someone who's been trailblazing in this profession for over two decades, if you gave us one piece of advice that you could be sure we would take with us every single day, what would it be? Um, I would say just keep going. Like there are going to be days that stink. Um, there are going to be setbacks in your career. Uh, there, are, if there are going to be hard days. Like we were just talking about mistakes you've made. There are going to be days you make mistakes and you feel lousy and you think you're not good enough to do this. Just keep going. Um, because everybody else is having exactly the same experiences, but like there will be people who will question why you're in the business because you're a woman. They'll think you probably don't know as much about sports as men do. You have to just keep going. Um, uh, you know, you you can't let um, their doubts creep into your psyche. Uh, it, you've you've got to believe that you belong there. And there, again, there are going to be tough days, but everybody's having tough days. In uh, you know, in every job, and it's okay to feel lousy, and it's okay um, to be discouraged. 
but just keep going. Go to the next day and, and don't let the bad days um, convince you that you shouldn't be here because you should be here. That is great advice. I'm definitely taking that one with me. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure, Judy. Thank you for joining me. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.